Okay, let's go ahead and figure out what the square root of negative 20 is equal to. And if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you absolutely need to be able to do this. But I can tell you right now, the what you don't want to do is to put this into your calculator. And um, if you have a basic calculator and you try to figure out what the square root of negative 20 is, your calculator might just give you a big question mark. It might just say something like error. I don't understand this question. Uh, sometimes your calculator will actually shake and uh, sometimes it will actually smoke. I'm just kind of kidding there. It's not going to do all of that. But if you're not using a um, kind of like scientific or more advanced calculator, your calculator is not going to understand what to do here. Okay. So if you think you know how to answer this question completely, fully, put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the uh, correct answer here in just one moment. And of course, I'm going to explain exactly how to do this problem, which is essential if you are taking any sort of algebra course. You're going to have to be able to work with square roots and uh, square roots of negative numbers. But we're going get, to uh, get into all of this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm here to tell you, you can be successful in mathematics. And I'm talking about all of you especially those of you out there that struggle in math. But what you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with a math section uh, on a dedicated math section, things like the SAT, ACT, uh, ASVAB, um, Alex exam, AccuPlace, or teacher, a teacher certification exam. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning uh, homeschool courses for middle and high school mathematics. If you need a pair of great math notes, well, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video, but you really need to learn how to take great math notes. It's so important to be awesome at math. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as this definitely uh, uh, helps me out. Okay, so let's get into the square root of negative 20. I'm gonna show you the answer right now. Okay, so this is the complete full answer. The square root of negative 20, you would wanna write this as two times the square root of five i. Okay, so if you got this right, pretty impressive. I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, an A plus, and a nice little 100%. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job, that shows me that you know how to not only simplify a regular square root, something like the square root of 20, okay, if you actually got this correct, but you understand what this little I thing is about, okay, and we're going to get into this right now. Super important for all of you out there that are studying algebra. So let's go ahead and first take a look at a basic example, okay, before we get into the square root of negative 20, let's take a look at this uh, problem, the square root of negative 9. So hopefully most of you say, well, the square root of 9 isn't at 3, and you would be correct. Okay, so guys, let me just kind of work over here for a second. The square root, not the square root of 3, the square root of 9 is asking, okay, it's saying, hey, what number times itself gets us back to 9? So you're like, oh, wasn't it 3? 3 times 3 gets us back to 9, and that's what the square root is. So you might be saying, okay, the square root of 9 is 3. Well, the square root of negative 9 must be negative 3. Well, no, that is not correct. So if you kind of thought that, you know, you had a little sad face, well, don't be sad. I'm going to explain this here in a second because it's, um, think about this. If uh, the square root of negative 9 was negative 3, what we're saying is that negative 3 times negative 3 gets us back to a negative 9. So is this true? Well, let's see here. Negative 3 times negative 3 is, in fact, positive 9. Okay, negative times negative is positive, so this is not true. So the square root of negative 9, where is the answer? Well, the answer is not in the real number system. Okay, so let's go back to this question. The square root of 9 is actually 3 and negative 3, positive 9. And uh, here, to answer this question, we need to use another number system. So the number system that you've been using all these years, okay, up until like maybe high school level mathematics, is all these numbers on the nice little number, uh, real number line. It's all these positive numbers and negative numbers, positive fractions, negative fractions, positive decimals, negative decimals. All these numbers here are what we refer to as the real number system. 
but the answer to the square root of 9 is not on the real number line. So where is it? Well, it's in another number system called the complex number system. Okay, and matter of fact, the real number system is a part of the complex number system, and complex uh, numbers are also referred to as imaginary numbers. Actually, imaginary numbers are part of complex numbers. This is a huge, huge part of um, learning more advanced mathematics. So never really heard of complex or imaginary numbers. You'll definitely um, see them. So this is going to be a little introduction on what they are. Okay, so let's go back and answer this question now. So if I have the square root of negative 9, I can write that this way. I can write negative 9 as a positive 9 times a negative 1. Okay, that's what the square root of negative 9 is. So I can just kind of think of it this way, 9 times negative 1. Now we have a property um, uh, with square roots that if you have like to say, let's say the square root of 4 times 3, you, one big square root, you can kind of pull these away into their own individual square roots like this, okay, these factors. So here I'm going to say, okay, a square root of 9 times negative 1, I'm going to think of this as the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1. So the square root of uh, 9 now, of course, is 3. We're talking about the principal square root, only the positive version of that answer. And now we get to uh, this interesting part right here. So when we talk about complex numbers, imaginary numbers, the way we define that is this. We're going to go ahead and take the square root of negative 1, and we're going to have it equal to i. Okay, And this is one imaginary uh, number. Okay. So this is a 1i. So the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. That's basically what you need to know right now if this is like your first um, look at imaginary numbers. So again, anytime you see the square root of negative 1, you're just going to replace that with an i. So we're going to write our answer as 3 times i or 3i. So the square root of 9 is 3i. Okay. All right. So if you knew that, that's excellent. But now let's go ahead and take a look at this problem right here. Okay, so this is our actual problem. So we have the square root of negative 20. Again, you're taking the square root of a negative number. So that means that the answer is not going to be in a real number system. We're going to have an imaginary number um, as an answer. So I'm going to go ahead and break up 20 times negative 1. Uh, negative 20 as tr positive 20 times negative 1. One big square root. Then we'll put this into the own little two individual square roots. So you have a nice square root of negative 1. So you might say, oh, okay, so this is going to be the square root of 20 times i because uh, the square root of negative 1 is i. So if you uh, kind of thought of the answer uh, like this, or you wrote this as your final answer, well, you were close, but you're not done, okay? So when we're dealing with square roots, square roots of square roots and radicals, things like the square root of 20, you have to fully simplify this. This is that would be uh, similar to um, having a fraction like uh, 30 over 100. Okay, uh, would you be would you turn in this as your final answer to your teacher? No, your teacher would be inclined to take uh, points off. Same thing here. If you're taking any sort of algebra course and leave this as your final answer, you're definitely going to have uh, points taken off because your teacher expects you to simplify uh, your results. So in this case. I can uh, cross cancel out a 10, and I'm left with uh, 3 over 10 um, as my final simplified reduced answer. Same thing here. So now my question to you is, do you know how to simplify the square root of 20? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so the square root of 20, here's the deal. What you want to do when you're simplifying square roots is you want to be looking for perfect squared factors. And these are perfect squares, 4, 9, 16, 25. These numbers, okay, are the result of taking other numbers like 2 squared or 3 squared or 4 squared, 5 squared. So there's an infinite amount of perfect squared factors, but you want to be looking for these numbers as factors of uh, uh, this big number that you're dealing with right here. So in 20, I'm thinking, okay, do I have any these perfect squares as factors of 20? And of course, we can write 20 as 4 times 5. I can write it as 2 times 10, but guess what? 2 and 10, these aren't, these aren't perfect squares, okay? So I'm, I'm kind of really concentrating on these numbers as factors. I'm like, oh yes, 4 times 5 is 20. So I'm going to write this as the square root of 4 times 5, and now I'm going to break up this big square root 
into two small square roots. Of course, we have our i here because we know that we're dealing with a um, uh, this negative uh, value as our original problem. So we're just kind of continuing on. We have the square root of 20i, which is correct at this point. We're just not done. We're not done simplifying. So we've got to keep that i as part of our answer. So now when I um, have this, I have the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, uh, five times i, the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so I could pull out that perfect square factor. So I have 2 times the square root of 5 times i. And when you um, have an imaginary number, you always put the i at the end. You don't put the i over here. Uh, rarely do you see that. So it's technically not wrong, but make sure you have the i at the end. And this is the fully simplified version of this answer, okay? So square roots, radicals, uh, complex numbers, imaginary numbers, this is all, you know, so critical to understanding algebra. And typically you're gonna be introduced to this um, at the first year algebra level. But anything uh, beyond that, algebra two, college algebra, certainly pre-calculus, you're definitely gonna be working with complex and imaginary numbers. So you really gotta understand this. And uh, of course you should really have um, square roots down and radicals down at that uh, Algebra 1 level as well. So if you need additional help with this, I would suggest like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course, you can find this at my Math Help program. Also, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with this stuff as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.